Hello and welcome to this webinar of Mulkel International. My name is Miriam Rickley and I will tell you today about Mulkel International and passive fire protection. Before I do so, I would like to explain the little control panel that you have either on the right hand side of your screen or at the top of your screen. With the red arrow, you can either show or hide the control panel. With this button, it allows you to enlarge or decrease the screen size. Make sure the sound is switched on so you can actually hear me. And if you have any questions, you can pop them in there so I can um, respond to them after the webinar. So first I will explain a little bit about who we are, then about the compartmentation and the criteria for fire resistant penetrations. I will also tell you a little bit more about the multiple products that we have and the digital tools, because they can make your life a lot easier, especially the multi-selector, the project manager, and the data manager. So who are we? Mulkel International is an innovative manufacturer of fire stopping materials for the European market. Um, we are based in Middelburg, the Netherlands, but we supply products throughout the whole European market. For example, Netherlands, Belgium, but also Switzerland, the United Kingdom and Scandinavia, amongst others. So we are specialists for passive fire protection products and systems. We also have a, a training center in the Netherlands as well. We started testing in 2015, and then uh, when we were happy with all these tests that are focused on the reality that you have on site, we started production in 2016, and a year later we started with sales as well. Naturally, the tests are carried out in accredited test labs. They perform the test for us, and that's then followed by an accredi by accreditation report or an ETA as well. When we are talking about our vision, um, we at Mulkel believe it's very important to test as close as possible to the, to the reality what you have on site. All our tests are done to the latest European norms. And we listen very carefully what the installers have to say because feedback from them provides us with what we should test subsequently. So we get some feedback from installers. We start testing this. With this, we can provide tested solutions um, to the building sites. And um, we also provide training just to make sure that people know what to install correctly, which products to use and how to install them correctly. So the details are correct as well. Um, we try to stay up to date with our research and development in this feedback, bringing it back into testing, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but always as close as possible to practical situations and actual situations you might have on site. So, as I mentioned, the end user is um, very central to us. We like to know feedback from them. What are their problems and problem applications? They can tell us, for example. Um, we've got a lot of pipes that are too close to each other or too close to the construction where we can't fit a full color around it. Or what are we going to do with all this insulation that we find around pipes, et cetera, et cetera. And so we look at the market from their point of view very much. So our new innovations and new tests are always based on practical solutions. Um, let's face it, it also needs to be, you need to be able to install it on site. So it needs to be practical. But it's also very important that it can be done quick and easily because the quicker you can do something, for example, with our multi-disc, it's a small self-adhesive disc that can fire stop uh, small penetrations extremely quickly. Um, because this is so quick, you can have large cost savings on site as well. So we look at all the three of them, practical, quick and easy, but also cost saving as well all our solutions are based on ETAs, which are European Technical Assessments and Test Reports. These can all be found on our website. We're very transparent with our information. Now, you do not need to read through the whole ETA and all the uh, separate test reports to find your solution. We have created a multi-selector for you, where you put in your criteria that you have for your penetrations on site. And then based on these criteria, a tested solution will come out, including details and a reference back to the uh, related test reports as well. 
we can provide tailor-made training for you and your company. This can be done for installers or distributors, but also, for example, for specifiers. We find it very important that everybody knows as much as possible about fire stopping, just to make sure that you've got the right solutions on site that are reflecting the reality. So please give me a call or send me an email if you want a more tailor-made training for your company as well. Then we also provide a more in-depth training with regarding to all our products and systems. Um, this is mainly for installers, just making sure that they know exactly um, how the products should be used. It's a very much in-depth training and you can get like a mobile trained card afterwards and a certificate for your company as well. So why um, pacifier protection? I think everybody will agree with me. The main reason is to save lives. That's just one of the most the reason. Um, of course, it's also to keep the fire under control. So the fire brigade can come into the building and uh, control the fire further or extinguish the fire as well. Then it's also to uh, protect assets, not just the building itself, but also the content of the building, and also to prevent any further business disruption, especially if you've got a company based in one of the buildings. Um, you want to keep going with your company as much as you can after a fire as well. And you want to limit damages to your company or to your apartment block and also limit damage to the environment. Unfortunately, the bigger a fire, the more damage it can do to, envi to the environment. Recently, insurance companies require a document that the fire stopping has been done correctly as well. And again, we have like a tool for you, the data manager, in which you can record all the fire stopping, including details and proof uh, with pictures as well, for example. Now, when we're talking about the fire stopping, um, the building will be split up in different areas where you want to maintain your fire within this uh, area. Um, this is called a compartmentation. So you want to maintain it within one compartmentation so it doesn't spread any further. Now the fire um, could spread um, through a compartmentation wall or to, through a compartmentation floor and you want to prevent that. So with your fire stopping you will uh, make sure that that's prevented, that the fire can't get through the fire compartmentation wall or floor. Of course there's also an option that it can go around it but we will not look into this in this webinar, but it is certainly something that should be taken into account as well. So now we've got our compartmentation um, areas and compartmentation floors and walls, and they need to have certain criteria. The first criteria is it needs to be able to be load bearing, which means that it shouldn't collapse in the time of a fire. So if you've got a one hour fire rated wall, it shouldn't collapse the wall itself within this hour. It should be able to stand up uh, all the time. The second one is the integrity, which means that flames, gases and smoke, for example, um, do not pass to the other side of the compartmentation wall or floor. Especially smoke is very important because it's um, the one thing that kills most people. It's not the, the fire itself, but it's mainly the smoke. Um, now, it's quite easy to see the smoke coming to the other side of the wall, but it's sometimes really difficult to see hot gases and especially toxic gases to the other side. So there are in the European norms some ways with, for example, cotton wool on the other side of the wall, for example, to make sure that that doesn't ignite. And that's a way of actually testing it uh, for integrity as well. Then there's thermal insulation. This is to make sure your heat stays on the side of the fire and doesn't go to the other side of the compartmentation wall or floor. The average allowed is 140 degrees and the maximum 180 degrees. Now, bearing in mind that after five minutes, it will be about 700 degrees already, and it can easily go up to a thousand degrees after an hour in a normal indoor fire. Um, you can see it's very important that this heat is limited to your compartmentation. And especially if you've got like metal pipes, for example, that might pass through a wall or through a floor, 
metal conducts heat very easily and so you will have to protect that making sure that the heat doesn't get transferred as easily to the other side of the compartmentation wall or floor. There's also heat radiation, which is measured at one meter. This is not really included in the fire stopping of your walls, but it's mainly for doors, screens, and shutters, etc. But these are all criteria for the compartmentation. So, as I mentioned, we've got um, compartmentation walls and floors. So the horizontal compartmentations are the fire rated floors and ceilings. These are tested on 150 millimeter concrete floors and the fire will always come from underneath. So it's very important to have your closure devices and your fire stopping, especially to the underside of the floor. So any fire colors will be installed to the underside of the floor slab. With vertical compartmentations, we can look at um, flexible or rigid walls. So we don't just look at concrete walls, but we can also look at partitions. And they are mainly tested in walls that are at least 100 millimeter thickness. And we can also look at fire rated shaft walls, for example. In case of vertical compartmentation, the fire can come from both sides of the wall. So it is very important to make sure that you've got your uh, closure devices, for example, your multicolor slim on both sides of the wall. Now we've got lovely compartmentation walls and floors, and then we've put in all the services in. So we will have breaches within this compartmentation. This can be, for example, pipes, and so we need to make sure that all these breaches are actually fire stopped to make sure your compartment station is still in place. So, for example, pipes you can do with like the multicolor slim, or you can have cables on either cable trays or um, bundles of cables, or just a single cable, for example, as well. But also joints between walls and between walls and floors that needs to be looked at as well, and around windows and doors. And also, if you have round socket boxes, we recently have tested the round socket boxes with our multi-disc in the back of the box, because of course you're taking away your layers of plasterboard. So you've got, again, a little breach in your compartmentation wall in this case, and we can fire stop that with our multi-disc in case if it's a round socket box. Now, with pipes, you might often have um, insulation around your pipe. This can be either a um, non-combustible insulation, like a stone wool, but often it is a combustible insulation because it's better for um, thermal values, like an elastomeric or a PUR foam or a PE foam. When it is continued insulated, means over the full length of the pipe, it's often there for um, to keep the heat or the cold in the pipe or to prevent any condensation happening around the pipe. So the MD people will not be very happy if you remove this insulation from your pipes. Now it can be um, continuously insulated all the way through your wall or you can have it sometimes locally interrupted uh, where you just stop and start it at the wall but that depends on the MD services as well. So this is mainly for thermal ratings of the pipe itself and for uh, to prevent condensation. But you can also have sometimes local insulated pipes. And this is mainly to, um, to achieve your fire rating of the surfaces through the penetration of the pipe. Um, in this case, you can have, uh, let's say, a stone wool shelf, for example, um, three or 400 millimeters around the pipe, around the penetration. Or you can have like the multi-term bandage, for example, or even with some coatings, you can achieve this fire rating uh, criteria of the thermal insulation of your fire rating. So it is important to realize that you do not need to remove the pipe insulation. And again, in our multi-selector, these areas will come um, forward. You can select them on the criteria. Then services support is also important. We don't really have that much influence on it, but it is very important that your service are, services are independently supported. 
So if they weren't, and they would depend on, let's say, your fire color around the pipe, then it, the pipe would start hanging actually within the material of the fire stopping, and that would not be possible, and it uh, might actually take all the material out of the penetration, so you don't want that. So it's important to note that if there is not no support, noted in your logbook, for example, that you've done your fire stopping, but it is important that the services are independently supported. In this case, it's an example of 450 millimeter from the wall, or in case of a floor, on the top of a floor. And um, this is all reported in our reports that we have. This is just an example with, for example, our multicolor slim. Another thing to look at, which is very important, is what actually are the services going to be used for? If you have a combustible pipe, the combustible pipe will melt in case of a fire, so it's open in the furnace, tested as open. But what are we going to do outside the furnace? Now, if you have, for example, a rainwater pipe or a vented waste pipe, it is open to the outside air, and therefore it can draw air in, but also this air heats up very quickly inside the furnace, and therefore it will want to go through with a lot of pressure outside the pipe and outside the furnace. So any seal that's being created here with your fire stopping products needs to be quite strong in order to prevent the gases and the smoke going outside the pipe again. However, if you've got a combustible pipe, but it's a closed system, for example, for gas or for heating or for water supply, then you can, because it's a closed system, you can cap it off on the outside of the furnace and therefore there's a lot less pressure on the seal that's being created here. Now with metal pipes, because metal doesn't melt in a normal indoor fire, um, the pipe is tested as closed inside the system, but you can use either closed inside or closed outside as well. So as I mentioned, the worst case scenario is like an open, open system, for example, a rainwater pipe or a vented waste pipe. And you can use any of the results from European tests for any of the other options, but you cannot use a result, let's say, from an uncapped capped scenario from this one, the second one, for a rainwater pipe or a vented waste pipe, because in reality, it might actually fail in your building and therefore you won't have your compartmentation anymore. Here I'm just showing you a standard ISO curve uh, that gives you like the temperatures after 30, 60, 90 and 120 minutes. And it, you can actually see like after 30 minutes, it's uh, nearly 900 degrees. And so therefore the thermal rating or the thermal criteria of your fire stopping is very important and you shouldn't just ignore that. Here you can actually see like a complete test buildup of our system. Um, with the multicolor slim, you can see we test different types of materials, but also it's very clear to see that you've got like some capped situations, some uncapped situations. And it's important to look at all these criteria because only then when they're designed and tested to what the services are going to be used for, you can maintain your compartmentation. Now our multiple products, I will go very quickly into what we actually have and what they are going to be used for. The multicolor slim, this is a universal color that can be used for many, many different applications. And I will, I've got a few examples in a minute time. Um, it's mainly used for combustible pipes and um, combustible insulation around metal pipes, but it can also be used, for example, for cable bundles. The multi-term bandage, this is what I spoke about earlier, where you've got metal pipes without any insulation, transferring the heat really quickly, but you still need to achieve your thermal insulation of your fire stopping. So with the multi-term bandage, it absorbs the heat and therefore you will be able to achieve your thermal rating of the insulation rating of your criteria. Um, we can also use them on cable trays, so they're mainly for metal pipes without any insulation. 
Then the multi-disc, I uh, mentioned it before, maybe once or twice. These are small adhesive discs that very, very quickly you can fire stop a small penetration, for example, some cables or small plastic pipes, just by sticking them uh, onto the surfaces and onto the opening of your wall or your floor. Um, they're very, very quick, they're self-adhesive, so it's, it's, it's really an ideal scenario. The Multimastic C system, which is a coated uh, board system or a bat and mastic system, it comes with two different types of boards, the FB1 and the FB2. The one is 50 millimeter and coated to one side only, whilst FB2 is 60 millimeters and it's coated to both sides, to two sides of the board. It comes also with the Multimastic C coating and the Multimastic SP. Now, one of the differences uh, with our coated board system is that you do not need to line the letterbox opening with a plasterboard. And of course, as all our products, this has been um, this has got an ETA, a European Test Assessment, so it has been tested to 1366 Part 3. And then we've got the Multimastic SP. As I mentioned, you can use it with the uh, coated board system, but you can also use it for smoke seal around penetrations, for example, with the multicolor slim. And then the multi-sealant GR, which is a graphite, which is mainly used for combustible pipes. But in this case, if you have like a 160 millimeter pipe, it's mainly for a closed system or, for example, combustible insulation around metal pipes. So it closes the gap where the combustible insulation has melted away in a fire. And also it's used in cables and cable bundles, for example. Multi-sealant A is again an acrylic sealant used for linear joints in this case, and also for smoke seal around penetration. So you can again use it as well with the multicolor slim. The multi-foam 2K and the multi-foam stone are a two component foam that remain flexible throughout its lifetime. Um, the very nice thing about this is it can be installed from one side only, and especially as the Multifoam 2K, um, it's got like a mixing tube uh, nozzle actually, so it mixes it together only when it comes out of the cartridge. You can reach very difficult areas that, are, that might be otherwise nearly impossible to reach as well. The other nice thing is that you can adapt your fire stopping penetrations afterwards. For example, if you've got different cables that need to go through the penetration, you can add cables and delete cables without having to redo the full opening. Then we've got a multi-wrap, which is a wrap mainly for combustible pipes and insulation around metal pipes, and um, the multi-mortar. This multi-mortar can be load-bearing if it's used over 100 millimeter thickness, and then it's used mainly with the things you find, for example, in risers like cable trays, dampers, combustible pipes, etc. And the multi-term backing for our multi-sealant A and for our graphite sealant as well. Now, because the multicolor uh, slim is such a unique product, I just want to show a few of the pictures of what the applications are that you can use with them and how it's all been tested. Um, so it's a long collar in the box uh, with which you can do different diameters, but also complete different applications. So it's just one product. It comes with the clips, but it also comes with the fixings and even a conformity statement. So as soon as you've got this box, you can start fireproofing um, either bundles of cables, uh, pipes, different pipes throughout one opening, conduits, etc., etc. Of course, we have tested it with our um, multimastic C system, our coated board system, and you can see on the second picture from the right that it's been used with the coated board system and there's no need to line the opening. You don't see like a lining around the opening with plasterboard. So it's just something I wanted to point out to you uh, as well. When you use it with the coated board system, we've got special multi-screw FB, which is like a little pigtail screw to fix the collar into the coated board. Here are some more applications. Um, for example, a 315 millimeter PVC pipe, but also um, 
inclined pipes and we have tested it now as well with our coated board system because we realized that often you just got a big opening and you need to put a coated board in as well so for inclined pipes either with or without acoustic insulation elbow pipes but also pipes that are in what i would say tricky situations where you can't put a full color around it because they are too close to the floor or too close in the corner we have tested them in these applications where you can still achieve your fire rating uh, even though you can't physically put a full color around them so it's a universal color for many many different applications and of course all these can be found in the multi-selector so that is what i'm going to talk now a little bit about our digital tools which are free to use on uh, the website and on the app you can find it on the website um, just over there in the multi-selector or you can download the Mulcall app and then use it on any of your mobile devices so what it actually does it it's um we've looked through all our test data etas etc etc anything tested and we've based it on types of construction the type of penetration what we are fire stopping etc and um with all these test data we've filtered it actually and then as a solution a tested solution will come out based on your criteria with a link to the eta or the test report and the details as well so it will save you a lot of work to find the correct solution and you know for sure you've got a tested solution as well so how it works is you've got several steps for example i'm here in step number three where you can choose what type of a wall have you got that uh, the penetration is going through so I'm going to say, for example, a flexible wall uh, wider than 100 millimeter. We recently also noticed that there's a lot of requests for smaller walls of 75 millimeters. That's why we've got them like still new on the system because we've recently done some tests for them as well. So flexible wall, then you can choose either a single penetration, which can be like a single pipe or a cable bundle or something like that. Or you can go for multiple penetrations where you've got a multitude of pipes going through one opening and fire stopped with one color for example or you can just have a blank seal in my case i'm going to look at a single penetration and when you do that it will ask you what is your position of the penetration in this case horizontal but you can choose any of the other ones as well and it will ask you what type is going through um, is it a PVC pipe? Is it a composite pipe or an aluminium multi-layer pipe, etc., etc.? So there's a lot to choose from. I'm going to have a look at a stainless steel pipe, and in my case, I'm going to look at Armaflex insulation. I mentioned before, like you don't need to remove the insulation. And then at a um, subsequent step, it will give you all the products we have tested with this stainless steel pipe with Armaflex insulation. So it might actually give you quite a few options you haven't thought of before. In my case, I'm going to look at the multicolor slim. So these are all tested solutions, tested products. So if I click on multicolor slim, it again comes up with a few options and different solutions. On the left hand side and the top hand side, top, you will see all the steps that you've taken and all the criteria that you've clicked on. And even though you said like only 88.9 millimeter pipe. Um, it will give you actually in your tested solution, we've tested it up to 168 or even 219 millimeter. So you can go back to any of these uh, criteria to change them, or you can just click on one of the solutions and see what exactly it is. So it will give you again the criteria that it's been tested to, but also it gives you here a link to the report, in this case an ETA report, and it tells you even page 139 where you can find this information. So you know for sure you've got a tested solution here. Instead of the elastomeric insulation, it will give you also at the bottom the type of insulations you can use. It gives you the details. And then you can go either back to the solutions, you can download it or print it or email it to somebody else, or you can save the solution and if you save the solution you can use it in for example the data manager and the project manager so if i look at the project manager all these beautiful solutions that we found in the multi-selector can be combined into one single document so you've got all your information to hand 
You can then add the project details, the application company, the client, etc., etc. You can even add a PDF, for example, for the fire strategy drawing or some information about your company or, or about the project itself into one combined file and document. When you open this document up, you've got a PDF of this book, which you can adapt completely to your um, requirements that you have. So you can change colors as well. And then you can see like one of the solutions is, for example, the multicolor slim in um, on an angled pipe. Again, you can see the details that it gives you, but also it's an interactive book where you can download again the ETA report because it's all linked to the multi selector. And again, in this case, it tells you it's page 34 where you can find this um, proof of the testing. And you can also download an installation manual for the Multicolor Slim as well. So it's very nice to have all this information in one single uh, file or one single book that you can adapt to your needs and to your requirements. Another thing you can use with solutions from the multi selector is the data manager. The data manager uh, registers digitally all your fire stopping penetrations that you might have on your project on the site. You can add um, ground uh, floor plans to it, etc., etc., different users. You can give different users different user rights as well. It can be used either on a desktop, on a computer, but also on any of the mobile devices. So you can add your pictures to it for your uh, penetrations. And it's got a very good like traceability. And um, uh, people can have a really good insight on how far the fire stopping has, has gone and what the status of it all is. So here I've got just an example of when I open the data manager. You've got like a floor plan on the right hand side. And then you've got like your pins where your fire stopping is, where you can either, it might be a little bit difficult to see, but you can either put a line to them if you've got a lot on the same space, or you can uh, duplicate them where you know you've got all the same type of uh, penetrations and you just add the different pictures to it. You can move them around as well, and you can edit them to give them the right information. So here on the left, you can see the right information. The different colors give you the different statuses of the pins as well. And on the left hand side, you can add all the information that has to do with your fire stopping. When it was done, who's done it, is it a wall, is it a floor, what is the detail? So your chosen solution, again, this is all linked to the multi-selector, um, are here. And again, when you click on them, you get into this solution from the multi-selector. So it's, it's all beautifully linked together to make it a really easy document to work with. Of course, you can add like your pictures to it as well, either before and after or just a few pictures from afterwards as well. But we, we find it very important that it works for you, for you and your company uh, to work with it. You can adapt it completely to the requirements and the needs of your company to make it as easy or as user friendly as you like it to to be so you can move things around it's uh on on like mobile devices like your phone or a tablet etc etc then of course you can also make a logbook where you've got a pdf of all your registered fire stopping that you have on site with of course your floor plans and a legend of the pins again these pins can be adapted to your needs um for example approved finished and in progress are default situations, but I've added, for example, additional work or a remedial, uh, just as an example. When you go actually in the logbook, you can view your pictures bigger in the browser, so that makes it all clearer. And again, you can click on your chosen solution uh, to make it like into an interactive book where you come back into exactly the detail. And of course, this detail will have again the link to the test report or the ETA as well. I could tell you a lot more still about the data manager and I do hope you will contact me afterwards if you want more information on this. This is the end of the webinar. Thank you so much for your attention and for your time to listen to my webinar. If you have any questions or would like some more detailed training for yourself or the company, 
please feel free to contact me either on my email or my uh, mobile phone. Um, again, thank you very much. And I will now start looking at some of the questions.